video we will show you the uh, latest uh, surface control unit Rev3 um, which is built for Procyanic and uh, what we have on this revision over here we have the, uh, the, the tether in and the uh, power in and over here is a USB plug for the uh, joystick over here so uh, the power up sequence is the power on then you power the, RO, uh, the uh, PC inside on. Um, what we have over here is uh, basically the same uh, setup as before with a few additions. Uh, first over here we have a, um, ESD protection. Here we have the uh, GFI breaker, same as before. This one here is the uh, current limit and the voltage up and down limit. This new addition is the uh, isogen uh, from a bender for the uh, GFD protection. And there's a 12 volt relay for the uh, output control of the ROV. Over here, we have uh, the fan button. This button will automatically start. You have to press and hold. And it starts the fan for both the base and the lid for cooling. Then you have a test GFD button, which will launch a test of the GFD. Uh, if you press the reset LCD, it also resets the Arduino and on the same time recess the fan you can press this reset lcd anytime you like and finally we have the rov on and off button so when we press the rov on button you have the cable side high voltage is present now with regards to the voltages on the system we have the uh, voltage that's coming in at the shop we have 230 volts coming in and on the output right now we have 317 volts and then we have the temperature base and lid so this is the actual we have uh, probes inside uh, the units to monitor the temperature at all time over here we have the intake so air will flow inside and the exhaust flow outside here and we have the uh, temper evident, uh, temper proof, sorry, keyboard, uh, same as before. We have an emergency stop, so if I press this button, kills the cable side voltage. Communication loss. Over here on the LCD, it says emergency stop button detected, power is disabled. So you have to make sure that this is not pushed in. So we will now start the ROV again. If we have a fault, uh, you will have the fault appear over here. Can you give me a flathead screwdriver, please? Something important over here on the uh, current, uh, we're only set to uh, about uh, eight amps. So if you're using a lot of amps on the surface side, and you reach 8 amp, this is going to cut off. I have Phillips, please. Over here, uh, it's set to 260 on the upper voltage and lower voltage set to 65. We're just going to raise that a little bit. We're going to adjust this. So right now I have it set to about 100. And the voltage, I'm going to create a fault. So now it's flashing because there's a fault. It's cut off my supply. And it's alarming and telling me there's a volt voltage uh, fault. So basically this means that the voltage is too low. You can silence the alarm by hold, pressing and holding the button. And over here on the LCD, it tells you it's been muted for... Uh, 
certain uh, amount of seconds. So that's two minutes uh, per mute. So if it starts alarming again, you just press and hold the button again. Now, if you still want it, for instance, to recover the ROV, you could, for instance, go on bypass. And now it tells you that danger, the system is not protected when it's on bypass. Okay. But now we can start the ROV on bypass. Obviously, this is not uh, ideal, so to clear the fault, I am just going to raise the voltage back up. And if you can see, the alarm disappeared, but we still have a bypass alarm, which I'm going to disable. So now we're back to normal. Lastly, to clear the fault, press and hold and the fault disappears. If you wish to test the GFD, you can either press this button over here, which is test, or press and hold this test GFD, which is the same. So press and hold. Now it's going through its testing routine. And the test routine is now complete. What we have over here is a microphone jack. Uh, actually, it's more it's a headset jack, so you can wear a headset for the uh, speaker and the microphone, uh, or just a microphone, or just uh, hear buds, it's entirely up to you. Over here we have uh, two uh, Ethernet ports and this over here is a program ports for the uh, Arduino programming. If ever uh, we need to reprogram the Arduino for the latest update, then you would connect a USB cable from here to any of the free USB cable and we would program it using uh, the computer. Other connectors we have, uh, we have the fiber optic input connector if you're using a fiber tether. We have an additional HDMI port and two additional USB ports. Over here on the panel, we have two speakers. We have two air intakes, so when we start the fan on, for instance, if I press and hold, Air comes in here and the exhaust is at the top and exhaust with an angle. Now, if you want to stop the fan, you uh, reset LCD, which reboots the Arduino and the LCD over here. The normal uh, startup process, what you want to do, if we turn the, comp the uh, ROV off, the first thing you want to do when you turn on the ROV, you want to then reset the LCD right afterwards uh, to prevent uh, the LCD and the Arduino from uh, uh, holding and uh, stalling because of uh, the shock of the contactor making the 320 volt contact. Can you get me a mouse? Uh, so what we have over here, we have the expanse control system, which is set to remain on top. We have over here the uh, QGC, and here we have the subsea power temperature. So this actually is the temperature coming from inside the power can over here. So there's a temperature probe inside here that is connected to a uh, I2C temperature probe controller 
which is then fed into our expanse PCB and then with USB is connected to the PixHawk and going back up to our computer. Now, we have connected the tilt camera on tilt channel 1 over here which is connected on the expanse PCB so it's not connected on the QGC it's connected through our expanse system to, provo to provide a smoother control of the tilt unit if you press the center button uh, sorry if you press the encoder button it will recenter your camera so just leave your camera looking at here I press the center button, it goes back to center. The other thing that we have connected on the expanse, right? So the tilt channel is uh, basically the slider number five, okay? What we have connected on the expanse as well is the Newton. So we have it programmed. So if I want to uh, open the Newton, like that, close the Newton. Like this, it provides a smoother control of the Newton grabber. Now, we have the light circuit is uh, connected to channel one. So we have two channels, the lower one, press on the button, on the encoder button to turn it off, okay? And if I change channel to light number two, we're affecting the other channel. Again, these two lights are configured on the expanse system light one and two so this way you would be able to angle these lights uh, differently so that you can adjust your lighting conditions while you're sub -C. what's important is you must have the io pwm turned on because now if i adjust my tilt but the pwm is turned off it's not affecting anything so press the button and it needs to be green in order to accept the commands. Over here, the subsea temperature, uh, we can adjust it to the size uh, that we want, like that. And hide the border. And if you stay on top, it will remain on top even if you're clicking anywhere else on your QGC. So if you want to resize it, you have to show the border. Then you can resize even smaller if you want. Bigger. Put it on top over here. So it's out of the image border now this doing it this way when you close and reboot um, the system is going to remember where uh, everything was going back on the expanse PCB if you were to connect anything else if you right click you can show the expander like this these are all the labels so you can rename your labels here you can also have the additional I2C controls. So if you had uh, more things like our thruster isolation board or our um, five volt uh, relay boards, 12 volt relay boards, and this is the reach mini controller, which we show in another video. Okay, now we're going to put the ROV in the water. We're going to have uh, Yulo, our assembly supervisor, and Nell, who's a assembly technician. We're not connecting the uh, KNM's grip because we're just going inside our tank. Yeah, let's put it in the water. Okay. 
gonna arm the ROV. Right now it's on depth hold mode. Now note that the ROV is slightly heavy in our fresh water tank. You will have to balance the weights when uh, you know in the ocean or wherever you're going to want to work. And uh, as you can see, the system is fully operational. And one light circuit from over here, second light circuit from over here. Now to power down, let's come back over here. First I'll set this to manual. Then I will disarm. Disarm is the red button over here. As you can see by the way the temperature slight, uh, really drastically dropped when you put it in the water. Try not to leave it turned on on the surface because it generates a lot of heat. So uh, ideally, because the system is cooled down by the uh, actual aluminum housing, so once it's in the water, uh, you can see that the temperature just went right down. So we're gonna take the ROV out of the water right now. And the power off sequence is reversed. So basically you ROV off over here and reset LCD after. Again, power off over here and reset LCD after. Once you're finished, you can close down all your windows. And shut down using Windows interface. Try not to use the PC button to turn off you can if you press the PC button and it will turn off, but then you might be corrupting some files uh, because you didn't close things down properly. So this concludes our overview of the surface control unit and the ROV for Proceanic.